Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager number RC1542 4x4 US 10R NRP hinge. So this is a uh, somewhat unusual hinge in the sense that it's a non-removable pin. Uh, hin well, you know what? I take that back. It's it's four by four, which tells me it's an inch and three quarter thick door. It is not uh, NRP non-removable pin, which tells us that it's an outswinging door. The only thing that kind of makes all of that unusual is ideally I would want a thicker leaf than a residential grade leaf thickness on an inch and three quarter, presumably solid type door. Okay. I'm holding that upside down. That can all be turned over if you wanted it to be, but no reason really to do that. So RC, that means radius corner. On the on this hinge, it means 5 eighths radius. Where 5 eighths radius comes from is the fact when the mill is making the pre-hung door and frame, they're using an inch and a quarter diameter bit. That's very efficient because they can literally make a pass like this with the router and they're done, although it's being done probably in an automated sort of uh, fashion employing machinery to do it. With every revolution of the bit, they're removing more material. It's more of efficient. It's more of an efficient tool path. If you have a quarter inch radius, which is the other size, obviously that's a half inch bit, so you have a lot more routing to be done rather than an inch and a quarter diameter bit and you're finished. So when you see 5 eighths radius, that's why that's being done. It's more efficient. It's less costly. It's less work to remove that same amount of material. And that's where you're going to get the 5 eighths radius from. Okay. Now 4x4, four four, it's important to note that the height is the first dimension on this hinge. Not really such a big deal to understand that the height is the first dimension when you're dealing with a square hinge. But it's sure important to know when you're dealing with rectangular hinges that might be taller than they are wide or wider than they are tall. You need to know the first dimension. Um, an application that you'll run into in residential will be wide throw hinges that could be 4x6 or 4x5. Or you might run into a 4x3.5, which is not a wide throw hinge. But it's important to know that the 4 is the, the, four is, the four inch is the first height dimension so that when you're prepping your doors and frames, you'll know exactly how tall the prep is on the door and frame. Now, this is a residential grade hinge. It means it's 85 thousandths of an inch leaf thickness and is a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here, the, the material is meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame so as to maintain that standard prep. It's important to note also that this 1542 is a brass base hinge, which would be very appropriate for an exterior application, okay. Um, and I can tell you that this client specifically has a uh, having spoken to the client prior to them placing the order. This um, is on a coastal application in California, and they really don't want to see rust occur on the material. Now, this is an NRP, which means that from the exterior, it's all but impossible to drive that pin out. You might think you can get something in there and drive that pin out. I'm going to tell you that I've tried. That's not the way you're going to get that door open, that's for sure. There is a groove cut in the pin so that when the set screw is tightened, it will seed into that groove, all but preventing you from pushing that pin up and out. So absolutely use those on exterior doors um, that swing out. Interior doors or those doors on the interior that you don't want the pins to be driven out, it wouldn't be unusual to hear of a um, pair of doors to a master bedroom where both doors are going to swing out, and those are NRP. The occupants of the master bedroom literally don't want those doors to come off. They want there to be privacy. There might be very uh, precarious children or youngsters um, that would leave no trace, basically, to enter the master bedroom. Odd, but yes, it does happen, and hardware is there to answer the call. 
uh, regarding that. So a very appropriate thing. The only thing I had spoken to the client about on this job was going with ball bearing and ultimately the client elected not to, which would be an RCBB 1542. And while this hinge is very smooth, nice acting, a ball bearing hinge is going to pay off huge dividends years down the road. I've witnessed a door installed 20 years later, the door that gets all the use, the door down to the basement, let's say, or the door to the garage, those doors are worn compared to the plain bearing, which is what this is, uh, dining room doors that are always held open, let's say, but those doors that get that action all the time, you will for sure see um, where between the hinge knuckles, up here, down here, um, very much so. And in my opinion, the marginal ad for ball bearing does not necessarily um, take a back seat to economy. If you don't really care what the hinge looks like in 20 years or less, okay, super. But if you want the door to work as smoothly as possible for as long as possible, ball bearing is really an inexpensive way to go about accomplishing that. Now, there is a link below this video to a document called Data Sheet that will allow you to review the RC1542. It's really just a summary of this hinge. We've covered all of that information. There is a link below this video as well to a document called Product Catalog that will allow you to review all of Hager's residential type hinges. And when I say residential, I mean because it's a confluence of the thickness. It's a confluence of the thickness of the radius corner and then the pattern of the holes for the, for the screws. And speaking of screws, screws are included in, the, in a complementary finish. They are definitely assuming you're doing all wood. These screws are non-ferrous. I'm going to go with them being brass. So be mindful that you're dealing with a material, base material that's going to be less uh, capable of handling stripping. So be, be mindful of that. These are fly-cut screws. There's like a funny point to the end or a funny profile to the end of that screw. That's for cutting, evacuating the wood as you go in. Pre-drill these holes if you're doing a new installation. Don't try to run these screws in without pre-drilled holes. Use what's called a VIX bit, V-I-X. We also sell those. It's a self-centering bit that will allow you to, in a spring-loaded fashion, push your drill bit in with the bottom of the VIX seating into the countersunk hole here. Really fast way to be able to pre-drill your holes. Any shop would certainly have that if you're doing anything by hand. There's also a link to a document called Template and that will allow you to review the location of these screw holes. Really important for you to determine if this is the correct layout of the location of those holes if you're doing a replacement project. I have found that Hager has a couple of at least uh, at least one unique patterns of what customers will call the zigzag pattern. How far down these holes are and how far over they are from the edge of the leaf on this hinge, I don't know of anyone who has the identical pattern. There will be others that will be incredibly close, like a 32nd of an inch. But there are clients who don't want to have it off at all, and they want the exact hinge. So therefore, review the location of all that material. The vertical height is not so much the trick. It's the dimension off the edge of the leaf that I've noticed is unique to hang around this. That template will show you several other part numbers as well that will talk about the base material of the hinge, the corner treatment of the hinge. Um, the important thing is all of those part numbers will feature the same uh, locations of the screw holes. So you'll see that template used on all of those different hinges. This finish is what is called a 10R finish. That is a matte lacquer antique bronze finish. Okay, So if you're doing an oil rubbed bronze, this would be the closest that they're going to have. They're not calling their hinge US 10B. This is a matte lacquer antique bronze. This video with my fingerprints aside will show you what that finish looks like. See if we can get the camera to focus on that. A little bit better when I hold it back that will give you more reasonable. You can see when the light reflects it differently that it does have a hint of brown to it. A hint. You can kind of see it 
a little bit, or at least I can, assuming my eyes are more sensitive than this camera is. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty consistent with that darker color all the way through. Okay. Obviously available in all of the common finishes, your brasses, your bronze, your chromes. These hinges are priced as each. At the time of this video, Hager requires that they be purchased in multiples of two. So when you buy one, you're not buying one pair, you're buying one hinge. If you were to place that order, we would likely reach out to you and say, well, they'll only send us two hinges. Would you like two? Or, you know, unfortunately that's the case. If you have an eight foot door and it requires four hinges, that'd be very typical to have four. If you have a six foot eight door, you're gonna need three hinges, which would be very far more common naturally. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Hager products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. If you have any questions on the Hager, this is their part number RC1542, 4x4 and a US 10R, non-removable pin, solid brass, matte lacquer, antique bronze finish, hinge, or any other Hager product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.